All right, once you upload the theme, you know, via FTP or in the appearance theme section, you'll want to make sure that it's activated. Once it's activated, you can look on the front end. You'll see that doesn't really look like what we're going after, so we need to set up some different page templates. So from the dashboard, we need to go to Pages, Add New, and then create, you can name it whatever, but name it something so you'll know, and select the home page. So we we'll want to publish that, and then under Settings, Reading, we we'll want to set the static page to home page, and then Save Changes. Now when you reload the home page, you should see a little bit different. You'll notice that this are automatically got populated for you. So now we need to just start building out the different sections of the landing page. So in order to do that, we need to go into the options. And you'll see that we have several different areas that we can change. The first one is the logo. You can upload a custom logo that will, of course, go right here. If not, it'll just use your blog name that's set into the settings section. But let's go into the layout. So here we have the layout manager. And right now you can see that we have all these things enabled. But right now we only have content we only have content in the HTML content area. So that area is this right here. So for example, if you drag that over to disable and you save the changes you'll notice that that top area is gone. So we we'll want to keep that if you want it to look like our demo. And you can manage all that content right here. So this is automatically put in there for you. But you can change this content. And there's actually this form right here that you can change out with MailChimp or whatever email, ma email marketing campaign you're using and just you know use the same classes wrap it in this MTB class and it should style it nicely so it looks like you know this or you can style it totally different just put your form in there and then you can go in the custom CSS or create a child theme whatever you want to do alright so that's the HTML content section which is this little block here notice that we have two columns one column blank logos and testimonials so we need to go through here and uh, we can change all these different blocks with these options down here. Another thing you can do in this HTML content is change the background. Right now there's this default background, but you can upload an image right here. And we recommend, you know, a pretty wide image so it, it fits this whole area. So you don't have to use this background. You can easily change it with this right here. So now let's go check. Let's go create the two column page. So again, we need to go add new page oh, let's save these changes real quick now we can go to pages add new I'll just name it two column and then I'm going to insert some text in here something like that and then we want to set a featured image here let's grab this phone real quick save that publish now if we go to the options again and the layout we can see here that nothing's selected for this area so we need to use this drop down we can select that two column so save changes we reload the page again and you'll notice here that we have this two column area it's two column because the content is on your left hand side and then whatever image you choose can be on the right hand side so that's pretty cool. Again, you can disable that if you don't want to use that section. So moving on, we go to the one column layout. So same thing, just add a new page. One column. Insert some text in here. Publish the page. Go into options, layout, make this page the one column. You can also change the background of this area. So this is kind of like a divider. You can see here in a second what this does. 
So if we reload, we see that we have this content in here. So we actually have a class or a, a header you can use in this area. So if we actually go back to this page, pages, all pages, go to the one column, go to visual, or you can just do it in the text here. You could you could wrap it into header like header h4, header my let's close the h4 tag, or if you go over to visual and you highlight it all, you can go to this kitchen sink and you make sure that it's header four. Same with this. So let's make this a heading two. And let's make this a heading four. And headings normally aren't that long, so let's take out some of this. Take out some of this as well. And let's save that. And reload the page. You see that it looks a little bit nicer. So you can, if you wrap them in header tags, it'll automatically make that white color. Another option would be to switch over to text. You know, you can add add a class to this. Class equals, you know, whatever class you make. And then in your options panel, you can go to custom CSS. And then you can, you know, make it whatever color. Let's add the class here that you just created in that. Class name. And then give it some styles. You know, this would be color is blue or whatever. Whatever you want to do there. Instead of using this, you could also use a, uh, a child theme like I mentioned before. All right, so we got two pretty cool sections going on here. Let's move on to the next thing. Again, in this section, this one column, you can change the background like we did for the top section here. All you do is just upload an image here and it'll automatically change for you. So the next section here is blank, a blank page. And I, I normally use this one for like a pricing tables. So let's add new page, maybe name it pricing. And if you switch over to visual, you'll see that we have this pricing tables short code for you. So you just click that and it'll automatically add these pricing tables for you. It's a nice uh, short code. So if you publish that and then you go into options again, layout, and make sure that blank is enabled. And then on this blank page, we want to select pricing, save changes, reload the front end, and then there you go. We have these nice pricing tables see that there's some a uh, little uneven that's because the going to all pages pricing it adds some spacing automatically so we may want to take some of that spacing out so in order to do that I think we'd have to do something like this update reload the front end and you can see that they're all even now so now you could just go in uh, go in here and just change whatever features change the price things like that change where the button goes and have some nice pricing tables there you know of course you could add a title of this page or a section so it, it looks nicer add whatever content you want to it alright so that covers the blank section let's go into our options layout again you see here that we have logos and testimonials. So you see over here in this section we have these two custom post types, one for logos. So if we go to add new and we just say logo one set set a featured image. You just pick some logos. I'd recommend them having the same size of course. Let's add a few more. Logo 2, set that one, publish. So make sure, of course, that this section is enabled, but when you reload the front end, you'll see that logos, gets, they start getting added here. 
on the bottom. So that's a pretty cool little feature. And the last section we have here on the, the layout manager is testimonials. And we just want to go in here, add new, give it a name, John Doe, give it some give it some content and publish. Sarah Thompson, give it some content and this will create a slider for you on your home page. You scroll down and you'll see here that you have a carousel with different testimonials. You see that it switches through them. So that's kind of long text but you see the idea there. And the last section we have here is this footer section. So you can obviously go into the footer here and you can put any text that you want. And you can see here that this one is the code to display above the social icons and this is the code to display below the social icons. So right now you can see that we don't have any social icons. But if we go into the social section and we enable them, right now they're both disabled. We have a section for the top and the footer. So let's go ahead and just enable both of those, save changes. And if we reload the home page, you'll see that we have social icons up here and we have, there's all of them. They're all enabled right now. And down here on the bottom, they're also enabled. So you can go through here and add the full URL of the item. So this would be you know, twitter.com slash gents themes. You know, you want to put put the URL, but the ones that you don't want, you can just get rid of. Just take the text out. Just take a few out here. And you can also rearrange them, so if maybe you want to reorder them like that. So if you save those changes, we should just have Twitter now. So reload Twitter and Vimeo because Vimeo is still has something in here. So you can see in the bottom left over there that it goes to Twitter. And since we didn't comp we didn't put the full URL in there, this one won't work. But they're also up here in the header as well. And in the options panel, you can disable if you don't want them to show up in the top or in the bottom. So again, on the home page, you can disable some of these sections if you don't want them to appear but if you do if you want it to look exactly like the demo then of course you need to enable all of them but that's a pretty quick little video on how to set up the landing page for landing sumo wp20 thanks